Hello everybody. Now I'll try to discuss the other manufacturing processes associated with the uh, thermoplastic polymer. So one of that is the thermoforming process. So thermoforming we understand that thermoforming there is the application of the heat and the forming means application of the mechanical load to get the desired shape. So both are combined together then we can produce the thermoforming operation mainly associated with the thermoplastic sheets. So to get the desired shape, so we starting the raw material in the form of a sheet and the sheet is uh, uh, with the application of the heating and the, and the load, the pressure, external pressure and then we can get the desired shape following the thermoplastic operation. So here this thin, uh, the sheet is basically projected uh, on a particular predefined shape of the, the mold. So when it is passes through the mold uh, with the application of the heat and pressure, so see that see first figure we can see there is a clamp heater heater is there we can clamp the seat very proper we can clamping the seat and the application of the heat is there so on the plastic seat now this plastic seat uh, can be deformed in the different way either we can use the direct pressure over it uh, such that this pressure will take uh, into the mold cavity and that mold cavity or maybe i can say the, here the uh, mold cavity and that as per the mold shape of the mold it will take the shape other way we can create the vacuum pressure also uh, with the by creating the vacuum pressure it will take the shape but that is why from these two point what we are applying the pressure here in the heated uh, seat that depend the two different way we can we can apply the pressure one is the either we can create the vacuum pressure forming or we can create the directly pressure on the seat component based on that we can say two different process one is the vacuum forming is there thermo forming another the pressure forming in vacuum forming we can see that uh, vacuum pressure is used to uh, to form the particular to form the heated sheet now in the desired shape so here if you follow this figure it's the mole cavity is there if you see this is the mole cavity so mole cavity will the such that if you place it the heated sheet over the mole cavity it will take this particular shape now from the bottom side if you create the vacuum drawn is there so after the vacuum pressure because of the vacuum pressure the sheet will be drawn into the particular shape and what is it cool down then we take it and this is called the molded part so this is the very simple principle you can follow in case of the vacuum forming so sheet is heated until it's open and then until the afterwards the vacuum needs to be applied quickly because we, we can apply the heat to the sheet until it becomes very soft when it is soft then very quickly apply the this uh, vacuum vacuum create the vacuum pressure then it will take this particular shape and the sheet when it is done it is we just uh, form part is cool down uh, to uh, to get the uh, this component so we we can see this is a very uh, in principle it is a very simple process we can follow the vacuum forming but similarly pressure forming is also there pressure forming we can directly apply the pressure onto the onto the heated sheet so here of course, it is very closely to related to the vacuum forming, but the pressure is applied the dif different way. So here in the air pressure is required, which is much more higher as compared to the vacuum forming operation. I mean to say that pressure requirement is much more in this cases air pressure, and which is uh, as compared to the vacuum forming operation. So due to the high pressure, the, with the we see this the the first with the clamp part we can clamp the sheet. This thing after that we preheat the sheet the preheated the plastic sheet once it is done the preheated the plastic sheet then we apply the the air pressure inlet we open the air pressure inlet or we can see that apply the air pressure uh, with the application of the pressure uh, within the box itself it takes the shape we can see it takes the shape what part sometimes partially also partially we can uh, complete when the pressure is lower side uh, up to certain application of up to certain pressure uh, we can create the uh, we combining the another vacuum pressure also in this particular process so for low strength the pressure difference caused by the vacuum is sufficient for the uh, forming operation so basically low strength material we can utilize the pressure difference caused by the vacuum and in this case thicker and very complex parts require the air pressure up to very thick and very complex part component we can use the air pressure 100 to 2000 kilo pascal application zikar. i mean to say that when you try to handle the very thin sheet probably it is more easier to create the vacuum pressure and you can get the desired shape also but when the very thick material we are handling in these cases it is better to apply a large amount of the air pressure to get the desired shape 
So, in this case, due to the high pressure, the heated plastic sheet can be deformed. But the mold cavity with that within, if you can see, it can be fraction of second. That means very quickly we can produce the component. It's a fraction of second. Uh, this particular uh, component can be uh, produced. So this is the this space and the pressure forming is very important. Uh, uh, pressure forming is see it's a very quick process to get the desired shape of the component. We can see uh, this figure also. We can see the finished part in the outside also there might be some intricate details if you want to capture also that is also possible and it will more easier to capture the intricate detail using this process if the sheet, uh, thickness of the sheet is much less in that cases we can create we can capture more intricate details of the uh, of the component we can see the and at the same time it is this process is also very fast process now there is another process that is called the blow molding operations so blow molding means we see uh, during the uh, the blow molding is the manufacturing process is used to produce the hollow object by application of the blowing the sheet uh, into the desired shape so hollow object by inflating or blowing a thermoplastic molten tube so by blowing actually we apply the uh, uh, mold, uh, blowing operation for the a molten tube thermoplastic molten tube uh, in this way we can uh, this that's why it is this process is called the uh, blow molding operation but when thermoplastic molten tube when the blowing operation is applicable for the thermoplastic molten uh, tube and to produce the hollow object this is usually called the parition in the shape of the mold cavity parition when in the shape of the mold cavity we can create and further we can apply the the blowing action for this thing so blow molding operation is very common if you want to create the hollow objects and ranging from the there are so many components products so we have seen that soda or water bottle okay or sometimes the highly engineered products such as gas tank electrical enclosures if you want to this is the this particular product can be processed through the blow molding operations but in general uh, there are three main types of the blow molding operations one is the extrusion blow molding stretch blow molding and injection blow, blow molding will in principle we will try to discuss in the principle of the three different process but before that we try to look into this the what are the advantage of, of this uh, particular process one is the low tooling cost and fast production rate these are the main advantage large hollow shape can be produced and material wastage is actually very very small in these cases and of course at the same time it is having the ability to produce some kind of the complex parts also produce so that's why blow molding operation is one of the most uh, one of the important manufacturing techniques we use the very specific shape of the component uh, more easily so now limitation is that of course this process is mainly applicable for the to produce the hollow objects because we are using the principle of the blowing so when we apply the principle of the blowing definitely we it will always link with the production of the hollow objects so that is the this thing hollow component at the same time so the blowing action is very difficult to control to produce very very thick component so that's why uh, it, this is not applicable this process is not applicable or this process is very limited for the thick component so i mean to say that very thin sheet is basically very thin component can be produced following the the blow molding operation now we'll try to look into three different types of the blow molding operation one is the extrusion blow molding operation we can see that extrusion principle we understand here along with the extrusion principle we can use the action of the blowing action here we can use it so just before uh, going into the details about the process maybe we can look into this figure first so here you can see the plastic pallets are there we can uh, follow the extrusion process here and extrusion process means it is passes through the uh, polymer melt passes through the uh, this uh, the, in the in the die head the, through the die cavity uh, to the die so through the die you can create this kind of the component but till it is did at not attachment with the uh, another mo uh, cavity mold cavity or die cavity you can say that uh, the mold cavity not attached with the mold cavity um, because we are telling the extrusion blow molding so here two things are there one is the extrusion process polymeric pro extrusion process we are following that means we are using the die also to create uh, this particular shape uh, maybe in this case second part is the or uh, 
the dye but here they are using the dye but it says this dye is basically creating some kind of the cylindrical hollow or pipe kind of things in this case. Second we are applying the blowing pores here also the, the allowing the blowing to occur. Third part is that we are using the mold basically we're using the mold surface so to get the desired shape of the component. So say I can say the cylindrical object and this thing using following the dye, dye part once it is entered then one is the in the the in the um, uh, cylindrical but uh, hollow cylindrical uh, object um, using the dye one one it is produced then we are applying the blowing of this thing so once we applying the blowing force here blowing pin is there we can keep on acting the blowing pin and within the dye cavity and since one what is the blowing pin is applied within the dye cavity and dye cavity we can uh, after the, uh, before applying the blowing operation to occurs we just close the die cavity and once the close the die cavity then uh, allow to blowing to occurs when blowing occurs so that the the it will the this liquid metal will try to uh, the projected towards the die wall so die wall over this thing and takes this particular shape of the die and once it is die uh, just one, after cooling we just uh, take it out and then uh, we can get this particular product so this is the uh, simple understanding of the of the extrusion blow molding operation. So here a cylinder of the semi molten plastic called a parison is extruded. So we can use the cylinder semi molten plastic. Once the parison is the sufficient length is extruded, that means this length is extruded up to sufficient length is there, then mold is closed. So when it reaches sufficient length, then mold is closed. Once the mold is closed, and then blow pin is specialized inside the parison. So inside the parison the blow pin is try to apply the pressure. The air pressure forces the parison to just project it into the onto the blow uh, the mold wall or uh, just to take the shape of the mold cavity. So once it is done the heat from the formed plastic is then transferred through the mold and the cooling lines basically we use the cooling lines also blow mold if you see the the mold cavity there are so many cooling lines are there these are the cooling lines. So once it is done, the the after blowing, then we follow the cooling operation, just activating the cooling channels, all these things. So then one becomes cool down, it becomes plastic, becomes rigid, then sufficiently rigid, then then mold is open, and we get the the product is removed, and we can get the very good finish as per the uh, design of the mold cavity. So this is the way to produce the following the extrusion blow molding operation. So you can get some video also to understand how it works also. Extrusion blow molding operation. You can see that. See we follow the extrusion operation, the rotating the screw and uh, we can create the uh, liquid metal. The motor is rotating, the screw continuously rotating. Here you can see that and that heating elements are active uh, just to melt the liquid metal. Hot knife is also there. So here you can see the sufficient part is extruded. And that is controlled by the hot knife when it is the sufficient length is there we cut it and then within the die chamber we can apply the air pressure blowing is there. So then blowing is there we can you can see that applying the blowing separately and we can get the desired shape on the size of the component. So this we can extrusion blow molding operation. Now there is another process that is the stretch blow molding operation. Stretch blow molding operation is nothing but it is a mechanical assistant in the set that stretch continuously stretching of the part in along the long, longitudinal, uh, longitudinal direction is applied and that is you can see from the figure also the blowing part is causing a stretch in the part along the hoop or radial direction. Now stretching is there at the same time you see uh, this thing gradually the stretching in the vertical direction and then after that it can part along the hoop and radial both radial directions or the hoop or radial direction we apply the blowing to occurs when with the blowing occurs along the radial or hoop or radial direction then it takes this particular shape of the die cavity. So a uh, die cavity uh, it takes a particular shape of the I can say not, not exactly die cavity I say that it is a mold cavity the we take the particular shape of the mold cavity you can get this uh, particular product. So this results in the biaxial orientation and increased properties can also be possible here because in this cases we can see the stretching is there one direction and the, at the same time longitudinal direction is there and the circumferential direction both way the load is uh, pressure is applied uh, try to allow to uniform uh, deform 
uh, along this the biaxial direction. So, therefore, in this case we can expect the uh, very good uh, increase uh, properties of this particular uh, component. So, that means we can you, we can bring more uniformity in the properties by following by extending the deformation the uh, controlling the deformation into the two direction one is the longitudinal direction and this is the uh, radial directions. So, here is this is called the stretch blow molding operation. We have another uh, type of the molding operation that is called the injection blow molding operation. So, here the in the extrusion blow molding is the extruded we are following the extrusion principle here uh, this case but here we can use the injection of the liquid metal at the same time we are allowing blowing to occurs and uh, in this case we can get uh, this particular uh, component. So, here you see that the injection blow molding process in the injection molding machines ok we can use the injection molding machines rather than the extrude the produce of precursor. So, here in injection molding machines rather the extru extru extruder to produce the precursor. So, precursor is actually called to perform the uh, to preform. So, precursor is basically is called a preform rather than the parition as in the extrusion blow molding. So, extrusion blow molding we use that this, the, this parition. So, that is not here. Here we can use the uh, we can call as a preform because it is the injection molding principle we are following here. So, the equipment has an injection molding unit and the of course plus and the blowing station both are combining together to produce the injection blow molding operations. And the mold cores are mounted on a rotating rotary table actually core is mounted on the uh, rotating table we can see uh, the injection blow molding operation we see uh, this is the liquid uh, metal injected and that is over the core also because this core is basically decide the thickness of this thing and this is over the rotating table. So, one create this kind of the thick uh, very thin uh, component with the application of the core then with the further allowing the blow to occurs once the blowing occurs we can get the shape as per the, the mold cavity. So, this is the injection blowing um, uh, the injecting the liquid metal core helps to get the desired shape. Uh, that making a thinner uh, hollow compart and then after that we remove the core we follow the within the core we just applying the this blowing operations. So, this is called the injection blow injection blow molding operation. Now, you see that in this process first injection molded onto a the hollow core pin or mandrel basically we can use the uh, the injection molding uh, molded component onto the hollow core pin or mandrel. So, while the preform is there and the steel hot preform is actually the preform is which is produced uh, by the injecting of the liquid metal till it is hot and the plastic. Then after that the injection mold is open injection mold is open and the preform with the hollow core pin are rotated together and after that we place in the larger mold uh, larger mold cavity on the such that it is basically larger mold cavity on uh, which is attached with the blowing station basically where after blowing operation it can de, it can take the desired shape as per the shape of the mold cavity. But in this particular process the major advantage is that injection uh, blow molding is that that the preform shape can be designed to obtain more uniform and the desired wall thickness. You can see the uh, preform shape preform shape because uh, we can take the more uniform more uniformity can bring the preform shape we can bring it so that is the advantage so therefore it is easy to further blowing to occur more uniformly in this particular process so in this process basically limited to produce the very integral handles so that is which is basically integral and which is not the symmetric part view strips and multiple construction these are the cannot be it is a produce using this particular process is actually difficult when you try to follow the injection blow molding operation. So, process parameter in the blow molding overall we can see these are the amount of the plastic material. So, basically we see the amount of the plastic material we injecting and when it is deforming. So, some kind of the wastage might be there uh, during this particular process. So, therefore, process parameters is one of the amount of the plastic deform plastic material such that when you are blowing to occur. So, material should be available just to take the uh, blowing 
uh, occurs to uniformly or each and all part of this component or particular shape. Second third part is the melting temperature of the plastic material. So, such that it should have been till now more molten stage uh, on the particular when it is reaches to the chamber of the blowing chamber. Air pressure, what amount of the air pressure control pressure has to be required that has to be optimized what kind of the pressure can be required in this cases blowing pressure and of course, what is the amount of the cooling time to hard or to cool this particular component. Now, usually the blow molding operation we use the different types of the materials uh, or different types of thermo thermoplastic materials uh, such as the high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene, uh, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, uh, polycarbonate all the different types of thermoplastic polymers can be processed using the blow molding operation. So, such that it is having applications we can see that lots of application the plastic bottles used made which is called uh, mineral water, mineral water we can use this blow molding operation to get the mineral water bottle uh, soft drink bottles can be uh, manufactured using the blow molding operation. Apart from this thing we can use the jars and containers uh, can be also manufactured in the blow molding operation. Uh, we can see the oil tanks, fluid oil tanks, mugs, different kind of the toys can be more easily, more readily can be uh, manufactured using the blow molding operations. So, here I am trying to explain the one the another different types of the, the blow molding mainly the blow molding operation for the thermoplastic material. Now, after that I will try to explain the different types of the uh, uh, processing techniques for the thermoset uh, plastics polymeric. So, for the time being uh, that is all uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.